said, I welcome you as our leaders in Jesus' name. And I pray that God will give you the strength and the courage and the vision to lead us, the church, to glory land in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your servants. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for all of us serving you to move your church forward so we can make the necessary progress and eventually make it on that final day when you call us home. We're asking, Lord, as you use your people to lead the church, you will lead them by your spirit too, and their own lives will be profitable and fulfilled and fulfilling as we pass across more of the goodness of God to your people in Jesus' name. Be with us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Tonight, as you have heard from the time of Sunday Scripture, we are looking at Psalm 61, Psalm 62, and Psalm 63. We're choosing some selected verses now in Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. In verse 2 it says, From the edge of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overweighed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You will find out in those two verses we have read that David was very personal. My cry. I cry. Lead me. There are people that have community religion, family religion, church religion, denominational religion. They do not have personal desire, personal conversion, personal salvation, personal confidence, personal trust in the Lord. We must not make the mistake of just going with the crowd. They believe, we believe. They accept, I accept, we accept. And we're just following and we do not have a personal trust in God. What is remarkable about, about this man, the second king in Israel, David, is that even though the family was a family of faith, a family belonging to God, he had his own personal faith in the Lord. We should challenge all our children that our children, as they're growing up, they should have personal confidence in the Lord, personal faith in the Lord. There should be personal salvation personal relationship with the Lord, not just because mommy and daddy are believers and so I go with them, mommy and daddy are deeper life, so I'm deeper life too. There should be personal conversion, personal confidence, personal courage in following the Lord in their personal lives. Let's come to Psalm 62. We're reading from verse 1. Psalm 62 verse 1. Truly, my soul waiteth upon the Lord. From him cometh my salvation. You still see the personal note that goes on about David. It says in verse 2, in verse 2, he only is my rock. You see the personal pronoun there, my rock, my salvation, my defense. He only is not he and voodoo and tradition and juju and traditional medicine or any other thing. This God, my savior, this God, my redeemer is my only confidence. I do not have confidence in God on Sunday and then during the week I have another thing I have confidence in. He only is my rock. 
and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He tells us in verse 5, in verse 5, my soul, personal again, you must have that personal confidence in the Lord and that personal devotion, abandonment unto the Lord that you will be able to say my salvation not our salvation my experience not our experiences my hope in the lord not our hope you have this personal uh, dependence on the lord my soul which thou only upon god only upon god not upon rich people powerful people and not on people i'm looking up to they will help me and then i just sprinkle some words of prayer on my expectation make your confidence to be in god so that no matter where you are and no matter what is happening to you you will be able to sail through because all those rich men all those powerful men all those popular people their breath is in their nostrils they'll soon pass away but the eternal one the everlasting one the one that is there am that i am that is all the time in all generations that's the one you have to have your confidence in my soul which thou only upon god for my expectation is from him in verse 6 it tells us he only underline that word only again so that your soul your mind your strength everything you have is focused on god looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved you'll not be moved in jesus name if he is the rock of ages and he abides the same thing you, know, you abide solid and steadfast on that rock of ages and you'll not be moved and then you're satisfied it says in verse 7 it says in god is my salvation in god is my glory the rock of my strength and my refuge is in god in psalm 63 verse 1 it tells us, Psalm 63, verse 1, O God, thou art my God. You couldn't miss the personal confidence that this man had in God. And he was able to tell God nothing between, nothing between, nothing between him and God. No doubt, no fear, nothing like panicking he depended upon the lord and upon the lord alone and then he could say in prayer without any shadow of doubt to god thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is in verse 2 it says it is to see thy power it says the reason my soul is passionate and panting and longing and thirsty after you is that i will see your power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary it says i come to the sanctuary i come to the temple i come to the place of worship and i see your power and i sense your power and when i go out to a dreary land to a dry land where there's no water in that vast field of a wilderness i also want to see your power there it is to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary verse 3 tells us it says because thy loving kindness is better than life anything i can get in life position and power and politics and prosperity whatever your loving kindness just to know that you love me and just to know that your favor is upon my life it says that is more and that is better than life my lips shall praise thee it tells us in verse 4 and it says thus will i bless thee while i live that's why i live that's the purpose 
purpose of living if i have anything that will not allow me to praise you and to bless you and to honor you and to exalt you take it away from me all i want to do in life my ambition in life my career in life my uh, aspiration in life and my doing and my deeds in life is so that i will bless thee thus will i bless thee while i live i will lift up my hands in thy name and then in verse 5 he tells us now my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow my soul my mind my heart my inner man my personality inside me everything my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow my unfatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips as you put all those verses together your identify number one desire desire panting after god seeking after god wanting to know god number two you will see thirst thirsty soul he was thirsty after god and then he says lead me to the rock that is higher than i the topic tonight is the desire of thirsty souls for higher ground the desire of thirsty souls for higher ground we're dividing the message to three parts number one the constant supplication of thirsty souls you're passionate you have the passion you're you're panting after god there is the supplication you have because you want to move on and move closer become more intimate and become like a real associate of the almighty you have a constant supplication because your soul is thirsty number two the commensurate strength for truthful servants commensurate strength that means strength that goes on in the same way as the duties increase the strength increases as the difficulties increase the, the the strength increases as the challenges of life increase you have strength that is commensurate with the situation of today and the circumstance of today and the challenges of today commensurate strength for truthful servants for those who really truly want to serve god and they say lord i vouch I've dedicated my life to serving you and whatever crossroad and whatever mountain I meet on the way and whatever challenges I meet on the way I know you will strengthen me because you, will, you are my strength and you are my salvation and I'm going to be having appropriate commensurable a strength equal to the circumstance in which I find myself number three the complete satisfaction satisfaction complete we don't have to go into the world to add their theater their dancing and their cinema shows and all the things of the world to add to our satisfaction we have satisfaction complete we don't have to go into all the traditions of the people of the world and then have their festivals and festivities before we can be satisfied there is complete satisfaction in the transformed seeker you come to the lord and he transforms your soul transforms your spirit and you're still seeking after the lord in god is your satisfaction the complete satisfaction of transformed seekers let's come back to number one number one we have the constant supplication of thirsty souls we're coming to psalm 61 and we're reading from verse one hear my cry O god attend unto my prayer in verse two it tells us it says from the edge of the earth wherever i find myself in the village the end of the earth in a faraway town the end of the earth where other believers are and where other believers are scanty maybe they are not there and you are at the edge of the earth and you are by yourself all alone from the end of the earth will i 
cry unto thee. I may not have the chance uh, to call on anybody and to ask anybody for help, but I don't feel lonely. I'm there in the end of the world, in that solitary place. I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, there are things in life that overwhelm everyone. That you didn't think that the water of trouble will be so deep like this and cover you all over and you're overwhelmed your heart is overwhelmed your mind is overwhelmed you are at your wit's end and you do not know what you will do like Joshua. but then at such a time when your heart is overwhelmed with whatever challenges may be around you, you still have your supplication unto the Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Here is a man who is not satisfied with what he has got in the Lord. Am I saved? Lead me on to the rock that is higher than I. Am I sanctified? Praise the Lord, but lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Am I filled, immersed, baptized in the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. There is still something more. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Am I healed and I've got the miracle of healing in partition of his health? Yes, there is still more. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Do I have some strength and I'm serving the Lord and I'm praising God for the victory and the triumph of yesterday, of last week, of last month, of of last year i thank the lord for that but it's still more in the lord lead me to the rock that is higher than i the new testament says and the rock that followed them is christ the rock that brought out the water that uh, that quenched the thirst of those millions of people that rock is christ all i need is in jesus all i need is in the rock and whatever i have got and whatever i am still seeking here is my prayer lead me to the rock that is higher than I it tells us in verse 3 in verse 3 it says for thou hast been a shelter for me thou hast been my security thou hast been my protection thou hast been my guard and my guide and a strong tower from the enemy Obviously, David could say that from the enemy, but we can say that too. And from the greatest of enemies, he'll protect us, he'll preserve us, and he will secure us because he's a strong tower. He said, the righteous runneth into that tower, and he is saved, and he is secured. In verse 4, he tells us in verse 4, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. That the secret of victory i will abide in thy tabernacle forever that's the secret of strength and abiding in the lord that's the secret of answered prayer i will abide in thy tabernacle forever if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask whatsoever ye will and it shall be given unto you i will trust I will trust, I will trust, I will believe, I will lean on you, I will trust you, I will trust in the covert of thy wings. And then, as we look at uh, the New Testament, it tells us that we pray, and we pray with importunity, constant supplication and constant prayer that we're looking up to the Lord and is to lead us to the rock that is higher than us. He tells us in Luke chapter 11, reading from verse 8, Luke chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 8, it says, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity have you asked ask again have you prayed pray again 
have you made supplication make that supplication again are you appealing applying to the lord he'll give you this he'll give you something spiritual something elevating something that lifts you up to the rock that is higher than where you are make that supplication and make it over and over and over until it is done and it keeps on spiritually lifting you up it keeps on encouraging energizing empowering you it keeps on strengthening you is because of his importunity you arise and give him as many as he needed and then he says in verse 9 he says i say unto you ask keep on asking and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says if ye then being evil by nature know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy ghost to them that ask him give the holy ghost to them that ask him he wants us to keep on asking salvation sanctification a clean heart a pure heart holiness of heart and life and the power of the holy ghost he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost part of the earth have you received the holy ghost since you believe have you received that power since you believe have you received that overwhelming and enveloping power immersing power of the holy ghost since you believe if you have not because you have because you have not as ye have not because she has not and come as with faith and as so as with faith the lord will answer in jesus name we're back to psalm 61 reading from verse 5 psalm 61 reading from verse 5 it tells us it says for thou o lord has heard my vows you have heard my consecration you have heard my commitment you have seen everything I laid upon the altar and I don't have any mind to take it up the altar what I lay on the altar of God during a time of challenge a time of difficulty when things change I don't take that from the uh, from the altar thou O God <clears throat> has heard my vows thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name and then he tells us in verse 6 thou wilt prolong the king's life he'll prolong your life if that life is to do something for the lord and the lord is happy that you're giving your all without reservation you're giving your all without complaining you're giving your all without murmuring he wants that thing you're doing he wants more of that he wants more of that vow he wants more of that consecration he wants more of that commitment and because of that he'll prolong your life to keep on serving him profitably for the kingdom of God in Jesus name and his years as many generations your years will be many all right my years will be many look at verse 7 in verse 7 he shall abide before God forever he shall abide before God forever. He says, yes, here on earth, I abide in his sanctuary. I abide in his temple. I abide in his presence. But then when I live here, and you do not see me anymore here in the physical, I'm not out of existence. I've only changed address from earthly address to heavenly address. I've only changed location. I've only changed my residence here and I move on to another residence up on high. 
and he says and i will abide before god forever oh prepare mercy and truth which may preserve me in verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 so will i sing praise unto thy name forever i'm singing here and then when i cross over to my new residence heavenly residence i join the myriads of angels who are singing your praises in heaven and i will sing your praise forever that i may daily perform my vows it says in verse 5 my vows and it says in verse 8 my vows have you made any vow to the Lord in your life? Like Anna made a vow to the Lord. I am asking for this son. And when you give me the son, my vow is I will give him unto you to serve you all the days of his life. Have you made any vow to the Lord at all? Or are you just coming? Give me, give me, give me. And you are not offering your life a sacrifice unto the Lord. You are not offering your skill unto the Lord. And you are not, ask, you are not giving your promotion and your progress unto the Lord. Whatever you give me, I'm going to give everything back to you to preach your word and to establish your goodness in the hearts of people. Jonah made a vow unto the Lord. But he forsook that vow and he was going to Joppa instead of going to Nineveh and eventually when the Lord called him back uh, through that uh, uh, residence in the wheel in the belly of the wheel then he said I will pay the vow that I made unto you. The apostles, they made consecrations and uh, vows unto the Lord. And they laid everything on the altar. And whatever challenges came to them, whatever difficulties came to them, they remembered their vows and they said, it is well, rather obey God than man. Have you made any consecration of late? Have you made any consecration when you came to the Lord? Are you still on that consecration? Are you still abiding in that consecration? Your time, your talent, your skill, anything you have that you said, God, this is yours. Are you withdrawing that thing from the Lord? get it back to the altar he wants you to perform your vow and he wants you to carry out your consecration and no matter what is happening and no matter the challenges that may almost over overwhelm you you tell him my vows will not decrease rather my vows my consecration it will increase lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In uh, Psalm 61, looking at that verse, it, so will I sing praise unto thy name. When I'm happy, I sing. When I'm joyful, I sing. When I have challenges, I sing. When I'm all alone by myself, I sing. When enemies pursue, I sing. When friends come around, I sing. In fact, in every situation, forever, I'll sing unto thy name. And daily, daily, every day, I will see the vows that I've made, the consecration I've made, and I will daily perform my vows. We come to point number two now. In point number two is the commensurate strength for truthful servants. Commensurate strength for truthful servants. That word I told you already, I'm sure you know this. Commensurate means the same measure of strength with whatever is around me. And whatever challenge I face, I have the strength of the Lord. There is strength in salvation. When you get saved, there is strength that you are able to overcome the things that used to overcome you. You are now a new creature. And you have the strength of the new creature through the conversion and through the uh, salvation. 
when you get sanctified and the sin that chose to pull you down the downward pull of the adamic nature all that is cut off and it gives you a new heart and the stony heart it takes away from you you have more strength more strength to run more strength to walk in the way of the Lord and now when you have the power of the Holy Ghost and you are empty load in that Holy Ghost baptized in that Holy Ghost you have strength greater strength and because of that you are having commensurate strength for all the challenges that you may have as a new convert the persecutions that came that salvation gave you strength to endure the persecution as a person that is growing in the Lord when you get sanctified and other kinds of temptation trials may come but because now there's a circumcision of heart there's a purifying of your heart and there is the sensitivity in your conscience the strength that comes goes a little bit higher because now you have commensurate strength to the uh, to what you have experience you have in the Lord now you are baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost is driving you and moving you and guiding you and showing you this is the way walk in therein you have commensurate strength and power for this situation now and now when you become a minister the challenges of a minister are more are greater are diversified from the challenges of ordinary people in the church and when you have that opportunity and you have that privilege of becoming a servant of God a soul winner a preacher of the gospel a person that takes the gospel to the regions beyond now whatever challenges you face there you have strength commensurate strength for the truthful servant when we say truthful servant i want you to divide those uh, that single word truthful into two truth full put it the other way you are full of truth and when the bucket is full of water anything that splashes out of that bucket is that same water when a bucket a pail a bowl is full of oil and then you move that person a little what splashes out is that oil when you are truthful you are full of truth and anywhere you are any question they ask you any person you are with what comes out of you is truth when you are joyful you are full of joy and when anything shakes you what comes out is joy when you are peaceful you're full of peace and anything that happens you what comes out is the peace of god from your heart the truthful servants of god as they move on in life and they face different challenges they have commensurate strength equal to the challenges that confront them we come to psalm 62 and we're reading from verse 1 psalm 62 reading from verse 1 truly my soul waiteth upon god from him cometh my salvation it's already said what he means is from him cometh my security from him cometh my protection from him cometh my deliverance from him cometh my conquering in verse 2 it says he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense i shall not be greatly moved that is you know when you are light when you have a sheet of paper on the ground very light and the wind is blowing that wind will blow the paper because it has no weight it is light when you have a tree that is planted with roots in the ground the same wind will blow and that tree will remain there because of the stability the solidity the steadfastness of the tree as a believer a child of god winds will blow contradictions will come 
challenges will come like a whirlwind that is blowing the sheets of paper all those that are light without any weight without any stamina without any root and without any conviction the wind will blow them but you will still be standing i will still be standing in your community you'll be standing in your place of work you'll be standing on your conviction you will keep standing in jesus name look at verse 3 it says in verse 3 how long will ye imagine mischief against a man ye shall be slain all of you is talking about the people that are wicked and sinful and evil as a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering face in verse 4 it says in verse 4 it says they only consult to cast him down from his excellency they delight in lies they are not full of truth they bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly in verse 5 it says my soul which thou only upon god don't allow enemies to shift you and to blow you off and to move you away from where you stand my soul which thou upon god for my expectation is from him you'll never be disappointed if you look unto men you'll be disappointed because they speak with their mouth they love with their mouth and they're friendly with their mouth but in their heart they're evil and they plan evil against you in their heart but if you look unto god my soul which thou only upon god for my expectation is from him look at verse 6 it says he only is my rock he only is my rock the rock of ages have plant my feet solidly with trust and confidence and with faith and hope i plant my feet on that solid rock of ages and it's my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved let somebody say, I shall not be moved. And remind yourselves when the wind start blowing, I shall not be moved. When the sea begins to rage, I shall not be moved. When sickness knocks at the door, I shall not be moved. When enemies want to tear you apart, I shall not be moved. And when the lion stands in the way, in the way of your progress, in the way of your uh, preaching the gospel, and it says, no way here, you say, my consecration, my commitment to the co commission of the Lord is that I will get to that side, I will preach the gospel, I shall not be moved. Somebody there, I shall not be moved. <laughs> say it, let them hear let it register in your conscience look at verse 7 in verse 7 in god is my salvation and my glory and god is still there and is always there in god is my salvation and my glory and god is only present in that omnipresent god is my glory he is submission in that all-knowing god is my salvation and in my glory and in that eternal god the El shall die in the one that is almighty and is immovable and is always the same yesterday today and forever in that god is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength the rock of my strength and my refuge is in god as a weight upon the lord the mighty power of god was strengthening you more than ever before in jesus name isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 in isaiah reading from chapter 40 and we're looking at verse 28 it says as thou not known by experience as that not known by instruction 
as thou not known by doctrine, as thou not known from all the people that have passed before us, as thou not known, as thou not heard, have you not heard from the prophets of the of the Bible? Have you not heard from the apostles who gave us the gospel? As thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding in verse 29 he giveth power who is going to receive he giveth power to the faith you will not faint he giveth power to the faith you will not stumble he giveth power to the faith you will not pass out you know, sometimes somebody is running uh, and that is the destination, but he's losing strength, he's losing power, he's losing the energy from within. All of a sudden, before he reaches the goal and before he reaches the destination, uh, he, he passes out. He doesn't die, but he falls and he says, I cannot take any other step anymore. You will keep on walking. You will keep on running. And the power of God in you will never fail in Jesus' name. He gave us. He gave yesterday. Today, He gave us. Tomorrow, He's still going to give. He gave it constantly. Whatever the challenge you have and whatever situation you find yourself, He keeps on giving power to the faith and to them that have no might. He increases strength. He will increase your strength commensurate strength for truthful servants as your challenges are increasing he increases strength as your difficulties are increasing he increases strength as the situation you find yourself is more overwhelming i thought i'd experience all the challenges i would ever experience but this one that came today is more than i ever saw remember the strength of today will be equal to the challenges of today he increases strength in verse 30 it says even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall in verse 31 but they that wait upon the lord are they there today they that wait upon the Lord, I said, I did there today. They that wait upon the Lord, that means you take time apart. Apart from church time, apart from worship time, apart from the time we are together. You see, I need more strength. I need more vision. I need more power. I need more commitment. I need more passion looks like things are going down the excitement the enthusiasm i used to have i need to recover that and i need to increase that the fire and the fervency i used to have the fire is not burning as hot as it used to be the fervency is not like it used to be i need more fire i need more fervency then wait upon the lord but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Is that possible? Can that happen? In whose life? I said in whose life? In your life, you will walk, you will not faint. You will run, you will not be weary. You will mount up with wings as eagles. You'll cross over all those seas, all those oceans, all those, tub all those turbulent winds and everything. You'll mount up. You'll not be weary in Jesus' name. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. We're reading from verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. We're reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait, wait, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, 
but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 8, in verse 8 it says, but ye shall receive power. Who is the ye there? Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray that power will be in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. I come into Psalm 62 verse 8. Psalm 62 we're reading from verse 8 trust in him at all times when you're happy trust in him joyful trust in him when you are sad trust in him when i can't understand why this is happening why that is happening trust in him when there's a little storm in your cup of tea locally there in your family trust in him when the challenges in the place of work they are perplexing and confusing you say you are a christian and look at what you are going through almost everybody is popular with the manager and you are the only unlucky one trust in him when some things happen accidentally i don't understand why this should happen that's not the end of life trust in him if you trust in him every time he'll always bring you out he'll bring me out i said he'll bring me out trust in him at all times ye people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us whatever happens god is a refuge for us they like us they don't like us god is a refuge for us we hear that things are negative and things are going down god is a refuge for us at all times you'll find him to be a refuge in your life in jesus name look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. You cannot compare rich men. You cannot compare popular men. You cannot compare highly placed people with the Almighty God. In comparison with the Almighty God, they are lighter than vanity what they can do and what they can promise and if those highly placed people are the only people you have the only people you depend on they're lighter than vanity but our god is as great as the eternal rock and we depend upon him all the time and then he tells us in verse 10 trust not in oppression trust not in oppression for yourself make a vow and make a commitment i will never get anything by oppression i will never open any door by oppressing any people do not trust in oppression to make way for you do not trust in oppression to promote you do not trust in oppression to keep your position or to have whatever you desire in life trust not in oppression do not trust other people who have the power to oppress others and they have the power to keep down other people you say i want somebody to keep down my enemy i want somebody to restrain my enemy muscle their mouth they'll never be able to do anything against me and i know so and so can conquer anybody so and so can oppress anybody don't go to them do not trust in oppress in oppression and do not trust in oppressors and become not vain in robbery do not steal what belongs to other people the glory that belongs to other people the victory that belongs to other people the success that belongs to other people they have labored 
and they have acquired something do not steal their name and do not steal their authority trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery if riches increase set not your heart upon them set your heart on god do not allow those riches that increase to be your stay and to be your support and to be your confidence and to be your trust it tells us in isaiah chapter 59 reading from verse 1 trust only in the lord not in oppression isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. In verse 2 it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Oppression is iniquity. Oppressing other people is iniquity. Robbery is iniquity. Stealing whatever honor and glory substance belongs to other people is iniquity. And because of that, it was separated from our God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. And then in verse 3, it says, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your leaves have uttered, your leaves have spoken lies, and your tongues muttered perverseness. In verse 4, it tells us, None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. In the world, as you look at people, they trust in violence, they trust in fighting, they trust in oppression, they trust in cruelty, and by cruelty they want to achieve whatever they want to achieve. And that is the reason why they are not getting the blessing they ought to get from the Lord. They speak lies, they conceive mischief, and they bring forth vanity. That will not be our lot. We're coming back to Psalm 62, reading from verse 11. Psalm 62, reading from verse 11. It says in verse 11, God has spoken once, twice have I had this, that power belongeth unto God. It says God has spoken and then he has spoken twice he spoke to pharaoh and he repeated the dream two times he spoke to nebuchadnezzar and he repeated the dream two times and many parts of scripture you have this now god has spoken and god speaks again over and over that power belongeth unto god the power to conquer pharaoh power belongeth unto god the power to turn nebuchadnezzar into a grass eating animal god has the power power belongeth unto god the power to part the red sea power belongeth unto god the power to divide your jordan and make you cross over to the promised land power belongeth unto god the power to multiply the little food and the little meal you have five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish of fish the power to multiply and feed thousands of people power belongeth unto god how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil power belongeth unto god the power to conquer any opposing evil spirit because as Paul the Apostle was a pre preacher to the deputy this man bad Jesus having a good name but bad character he was to them wanting to turn the uh, deputy away from the faith and power belongeth unto God and Paul the Apostle looked at him eyeball to eyeball and say you child of the devil will you not cease to 
to withstand God and to derail the man from hearing the word and he says now the hand of the Lord is upon you you'll be blind not seeing the sun for a season because of what you have done power belongeth unto God he became blind and they were leading him all about power belongeth unto God this man this apostle Peter he was in the prison and the following day Herod was thinking he'll bring him out of that prison and then to satisfy the Jews he'll kill him an angel came to God those doors iron doors open before the angels because power belongeth unto God and he tapped him and he rose up he said follow me he put on on his sanders and you followed him and when they come to the iron gauge any iron gauge you come across will open in jesus name and then those iron gates uh, open and then the angel said you are free now and he left and then peter looked around and he saw that the Lord had delivered him from Herod and from the expectation of the Jews because power belongeth unto God in your life today, in your life tomorrow, in your life every time, all the days of your life, anywhere you are, any dungeon, any stormy sea, any rock, anything, you are going to discover power belongeth unto God. That power will walk in your life. That power will rule every stone out of your life. That power will pick you up from anywhere they drop you and will bring you to the top of the rock in Jesus' name. In your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, in the circumstances around you. Because with God, all things are possible. And to him who believes all things are possible, you will discover the power belongeth unto God. The power for promotion, power belongeth unto God. And the power for open doors, power belongeth unto God. And the power for your healing and deliverance, power belongeth unto God. And the power to make you successful every day, every moment of your life, power belongeth unto God. That power will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming now to point number three. Point number three is the complete satisfaction of transformed seekers. The complete satisfaction of transformed seekers. The Lord will satisfy you. As you are seeking the Lord, whatever you are seeking the Lord for, the Lord will satisfy all your needs, every need of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 63 verse 1. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. It tells us in verse 2. It says in verse 2, I'm here to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. In verse 3 it says because that loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee look at verse 4 in verse 4 thus when I bless thee while I live I will lift up my hands in thy name and then in verse 5 it says my soul shall be satisfied your soul shall be satisfied your life will be satisfied your family will be satisfied in the meaning you'll be satisfied turn to the right turn to the left and move on straight you'll be satisfied all the works of your hand everything you do you'll be satisfied in Jesus name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful leaves satisfaction will come as you seek the Lord in Jesus name 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Those who are seeking the Lord, transform seekers. They're seeking the Lord, and everything the Lord has for them will be theirs. But seek it first, the kingdom of God. Seek it first, the kingdom of God, the expansion of the kingdom. Seek it first, the kingdom of God, the establishment of the kingdom in your community, in your, in your village, in your town, and in your region where you are. Seek the establishment of the kingdom and seek the expansion and seek the extension of that kingdom seek everything the expectation of the kingdom wherever you are that the kingdom is established there is expanding there seek it first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you no subtraction in your life I said no subtraction in your life, addition in every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Let's come back now to Psalm 63. We're looking at verse 6. Psalm 63, verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed, don't remember injury don't remember bad news don't remember uh, the, the a furious face of nebuchadnezzar of your enemy don't remember all their threats and don't remember what they did yesterday they brought that one down they brought that one down that's not your business remember only the lord upon your bed and everything you expect will be fulfilled in jesus name when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. And then he says in verse 7, because thou hast been my help, my help, who is your helper? Thou hast been my help. If you, if you know your helper, say it confidently. Because thou hast been my helper, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. In the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. You will rejoice. Later that you lost will come back. The joy you lost will come back. Look at verse 8. He tells us in verse 8, my soul followeth hard after thee. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. It will uphold you. You will not fall in Jesus' name. Verse 9, in verse 9, it says, But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They will not catch you. They will not see you. The Lord will blindfold them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, they shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the foxes. And now in verse 11, but the king shall rejoice in God. He has made us kings and priests unto the heavenly father. And you will rejoice in God in Jesus' name. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speaketh lies shall be stopped. The goodness of God will multiply your life. As you move on seeking the goodness of the kingdom of God, the expansion of the kingdom of God, every good thing you ought to have will be your portion in Jesus' name. Joy, joy, happiness, satisfaction, fulfillment, expectation, every good thing that you desire, victory, success, overcoming life when you are overwhelmed you tell the lord lead me to the rock that is higher than i you will go higher and you'll be going higher and higher every day in jesus name stand up and tell the lord lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The Lord has a lot for you tonight, a lot for your fulfillment, a lot for your satisfaction, a lot for your happiness, a lot for the goodness of God in your life. Pray and say, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I.